debt coverage ratio, and what kind of risks does it pose? So I'm Tim Diesel, commercial real estate consultant. What I want to talk about today is debt coverage ratio. Now I've made prior videos where I've explained this in detail, and I'm sure you guys can Google it and kind of get the gist of everything. So what I want to talk about today is what you're looking for uh, and what the bank is looking for. So there's two ways to look at debt coverage ratio. Now, the bank wants 1.2. That's the bare minimum. And 1.2 is uh, the, the, the percentage of it. So for every dollar that comes in, 20 cents goes, goes out. So they wanna see you have a cushion, right? And if you're, I don't know, you have a $40,000 a year mortgage, you're making $50,000. If you've got a $60,000 a year mortgage, you're making 80, so on and so forth. They wanna know you're making enough money to cover the debt on, on the deal. Now. This is very important because I get questions once in a while and they talk about credit and, and questions are, hey, Tim, I don't have great credit or I don't have a lot of money. Listen, this is more important to the bank than what you're sitting on in cash or what your credit score is. If the property does not cover the debt, there is no deal. So. Pay attention to this and make sure you're getting into something that makes sense. When you're doing debt coverage ratio, you should be doing it, um, you should really be taking your time with it. And if you have investors or maybe a, a second of some sort, you should be figuring out what that's going to be as well. And the reason why this is important, I say stay away from 1.2. I think 1.2 is too low. I think you really want to be around 1.4, 1.5. The more you get away from 1.2, the better. Um, and if you're really, if you're in the 1.3 and up, you're you're in better shape. You're in pretty good shape. Now, the reason for this is property can turn real quick, real quick, depending on the type of property it is. So, let's suppose you have uh, an apartment building. In an apartment building, it might turn slower. So, it, it, that's good and bad. It's good because the odds of everyone just moving out in the same weekend are probably pretty slim. The odds of you being able to increase the rent so much on all of these tenants are also pretty slim. Most people have contracts, leases of some sort. You can't do it that well. A medical building, same thing. Most of the time it's a three year, five year lease, whatever that is. Um, it, it can only go so far, so, you know, it, so much. And when this changes is not when you're buying the property, it's um, the most of the time if maybe tenants are moving out and you have a vacancy, that could change the debt coverage ratio and the bank could possibly say, some, depending on the size of the property, of course, they can say, hey, what's going on there? Let us know what their vacancy is like, their sales, all that good stuff. Because they want to be safe, they want to be secured. Now. Anytime you are borrowing money, and if you are raising money, you're doing some kind of, um, um, depending on where your state is, depending on where you are, I don't know, but it, let's just suppose it's a small deal and you're looking for investors and suppose they're not accredited investors. Now accredited investors, you should know those guys, um, um, they're, they're treated a little bit differently and you can legally do a lot more things. They can actually legally invest in things that other people cannot. And do some research on accredited investors. If you guys are interested, I'll give you a breakdown on, on them and all that good stuff. But let's suppose you're borrowing money and the deal's $100,000, just say small deal. And you're borrowing 20 grand. Well, the property may cover on the 80 grand, right? From the, you get from the bank. But you also should do some kind of calculation for your investors because you never want to be in a situation where you're negative. That's very difficult. Even if you have the money, I tell a lot of people, stay away from a deal um, unless you have a plan for it. If it's like your first or second deal and you're trying to get in there and you're going to uh, hold off uh, a negative cash flow for a while, it's probably not a very good thing unless you know tenants, you have connections, um, uh, maybe you, you've got sig significant amount of reserves. So that's a little bit different situation. This really measures your, your risk tolerance into a deal. And doesn't matter what the upside is, it doesn't matter who's involved in the deal. If the cash flow supports 
your operation, everything else will be that much easier. And uh, it's true, most of your money in real estate is made in appreciation, right? You buy a property 10 years ago, it's worth so much more now. But if you're in negative cash flow, you can never take it there. So you have to be, be careful of how you get into deals, these deals. So the biggest thing I want you to take away from this video is when you're doing a debt coverage ratio, do it for yourself on, on the bank's uh, valuation, and then also do it for your investors. If you show the investors what you're doing, it's much easier to have a conversation. Say, listen, I'm making this much money, and with this much cash, I'm going to pay you guys and, and then work out these terms this way. So let me know if you have any questions. I hope that was helpful, and thank you so much.